on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday, February 15th, the day after Valentine's Day. I hope you're not mopping up any kitchen disasters, no hot chocolate or fondue mistakes. Play, keep it simple. That's my that's my suggestion to everybody. Hope you had a good Valentine's Day. Galaxy getting ready to head for their very last preseason game coming up this weekend. That'll be it. Then the Galaxy off to, my, off to get ready for Miami as Miami will play a midweek game and then come over. So the beginning of the season is upon us. We're going to talk about the game that happened midweek against New York City FC. Probably a little recap of my time out at Coachella. Um, and then we're going to get you ready for Joseph Pate's Hill. We're going to talk about the LA Galaxy's kit release and a whole bunch more as we can fit everything in. We are very, very, very glad to have everybody here and very glad to have them back once again in the fold. The Portuguese hammer himself, Mr. Eric Vieira. How's it going, bud? It's going all right. I'm glad to be back. You know, it's, love is in the air. It was, you know, Valentine's Day yesterday. MLS is in the air. We're that close. Right. We're getting so close to the season. It's right around the corner. There's preseason action. There's kits dropping. There's, you know, rumors of DPs showing up. It's just this This is the time. This is the time where everything's exciting. We're, we're undefeated still yes. in, the, in, well, I mean, in the regular season. In the regular season, season not in preseason, in season, obviously. Yeah, yeah but, you know, <laughs> um, certainly. It, it, no, but it, it does have that feeling. It was funny. Um, one, of my, uh, one of my longtime Galaxy friends, Leslie, sort of brought it up today on Twitter just before we started this. She was like, we need to bring back Galaxy Gear Fridays. Now, way back in the day, all right, this we're talking 2009, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. It was Galaxy Gear Fridays, right? And the deal was on Friday, you wear your Galaxy gear. You know, like on Wednesdays, we wear pink. Mm -hmm. on, on Friday, you wear your Galaxy gear. And then not only do you wear your Galaxy gear, you take a picture of you wearing it and you tweet it out and you, with the hashtag Galaxy Gear Friday. All right, that, like that needs to come back, Eric. And I am here to throw the full weight of Corner of the Galaxy behind it. So tomorrow, you wear Galaxy gear. That is how it works. Friday. You're listening on Friday. Hopefully you're listening in the morning. You know, like you're still in bed with your significant other. You're sort of poking them to get, make sure they take the shower first. That way, you know, you can still stay in bed. You're listening to us right now. You're like, what am I going to wear? Well, we have solved that problem for you. You need to wear Galaxy gear. Is that, is that yeah. I mean, I don't think you have any Galaxy gear. So I don't I think. I was going to say, I'm, I'm dripped head to toe. I think don't check my undies because <laughs> uh, that's the only thing that's missing right now. Uh, wait, no, the undies wait. aren't missing. The Galaxy. Wait, wait, themed. wait. All right. This wait. is already. <laughs> already. <laughs> off okay. the rails okay good but good but oh you know babe galaxy gear friday just dropped so that that's that's what you gotta say right now I, it was a thing of more recently as well i think it wasn't just way back in the day i want to say even you know four or five years ago it, it was a thing kind of like a casual friday so yes. i'm all behind it hashtag yes. galaxy yes. gear friday take your picture where your your one two threads if you got it where your your menace gear your whatever you have a pin if you're going into the office maybe it's a nice you know galaxy polo something like that Show, show your gear. It's a fun way to kind of get hyped up for the season. So I'm all about, uh, you know, that suggestion moving forward and, and, with and, it. So big shout out to Leslie on that one. And, and we're going to we're going to talk about this later. But the Galaxy dropping their new kit, the Angelino kit, 
Um, that is that is the name. Is that, that the, the official? That, is that the looks scoop? that looks like that's an official name. They said you know basically we found out because in the in the thing where it says on Friday there will be like you know forty percent off the at the Galaxy Store. It's like but not the Angelino kit stuff. And it's like oh yeah that that's okay. that's the there thing. you go. <laughs> so it looks like the Angelino kit. I was all excited because I was like man I know about this. I was gonna drop it right here. I'm gonna be like get ready for tomorrow because the kit is coming out. And I was even requesting that I got get to say it a little bit early. Right. I was like oh man I'm I'm gonna get excited. And then of course they put out a thing. So we we'll talk about that kit is going <laughs> but I, I want to talk a little bit about Coachella you didn't get to go and I feel horrible I about up. that but I got to go so I don't feel horrible about that so um <laughs> fair enough it was uh it was a ton of fun and and just to start off before we get too far away from everything uh big thank you to the LA Galaxy thank you to Diego Fagundes Greg Vanny Tom Braun Will Kuntz um big shout out to Tom Bogert by the way as well um but also from the LA Galaxy who helped us get all those interviews Vicky Mercado and Kevin Acevedo um and then uh who was in charge of a, a lot of the stuff at AEG and 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 coordinating Coachella uh James McLoon was there and he was a big help to us as well so thank you so much for having us it was great uh I loved it I want to do it again like let's sign me up right now let's book it and then you can start getting your tickets and you know you can pull the Tom Bogart and fly into LA and then you're like oh well Palm Springs is only two hours away and then it took him like four and a half hours because you know it's LA <laughs> right you know that type yeah. of thing I think some people mentioned even flying into San Diego that might have been the move yeah uh, to get there a little quicker as well but yeah it looked it looked great uh, watching the game streamed even leading up before the weekend just the scenic backdrop the way they have everything in front of the fountain there it's just it's perfect you know, advertising. It's one of those things like the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day is such a great advertisement for Southern California. Great weather even in January. That you can tell is going to be the spot. It's already the spot for, you know, teams to come for preseason. But you, it really came across well with the way that they're broadcasting games. The, I think the broadcasts still could use a little bit uh, of improvement. But then when you take into account you know, the setup that they have. It, it's not, you know, a full stadium. That's kind of right. a, a little bit more makeshift. So I, I'm able to give them a pass on that. But listening to the show as well, I did have major FOMO. Yeah. You know, you you were like, are you, are you joking? Are you actually going to come in? Right. Are you really coming? But yeah, I, I, I really could not. <laughs> yeah, I was I was telling everybody beforehand that I called you on my way in. I was like, hey, hey, so uh, you're 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 not here, right? You know, it was the whole day. <laughs> Where we 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 both listen to Two Bears, um, the the podcast, yeah. right? And and Two Bears One Cave, and and one of the things is like one of the guys was always expecting the other guy to show up, and so that was me. I was like, oh, Eric's going to show up. You're just going to show yeah. up, right? Like you're, <laughs> just, you're here. Just, I was going to pull Tom Boger. Like you needed another guest, one more person on top of that a uh, cavalcade yeah. of galaxy stars that you had there. So I felt like it went. Uh, kudos to you, you know, for people who may not know behind the scenes, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of puppeteering that needs to happen to kind of make that all happen while there's a live show going on. So big kudos to you for making that, you know, go off without a hitch. I felt like it was a solid 60 minutes of all content. No fluff. I, I, I was good. It is. It is. It was exhausting. I'll tell you. I went home and literally didn't move on the couch while I watched the Super Bowl um and and did that whole thing towards the end there and i almost i swear i almost fell asleep on the way home like you know it was one of those um so uh looking at the la galaxy and and sort of seeing how they how they played and and watching that that was great and then but having to be ready for the show as well was just it was a lot of brain power in there um if you ask me what i said i have no idea it was one of those shows because it was <laughs> like i was out, yeah. well i was constantly as we were talking to our guests and let's be very clear that math was a major struggle for me early in this <laughs> i could have easily figured some of this stuff out but we were like <laughs> oh hey the game we should be starting around 12 between 12 and 12 15 right the game's going to be over at 12 15 let's do the math on that for a second if the game starts at 10 and there's 90 minutes plus 15 minutes what time does that end oh that would be 11 45 not 12 o'clock which is a much big difference so at 11 45 i'm sitting there going oh man the game's over huh <laughs> i go i guess are we going to sit around for half an hour before we start that seems like a long time the whole deal and then i looked at kevin and i got a text message from from vicky who was coordinating she goes hey diego's going to be ready in five minutes so like you should probably start the show and i'm like <gasps> Okay, we go. So um, I had my yeah, little... Yeah, that's where my brain went. Yeah. Is, you know, the players are already on their fifth cool down lap and you're like, you know, just waiting around doing crowd warm up. It's like, no, those players get off the field. They're ready to roll. Well, and they held the bus for Diego Fugundes. Let's be very clear. They held the bus for Diego Fugundes to go back to the hotel and it was, they were basically waiting on him. So we knew that we had him for a short amount of time. Like, and I tried, I think we kept him around seven or eight minutes was, was right around what I was trying to do. And we ended up accomplishing that. But we only had him for that amount of time. And then 
I got as we were going through that, I get I see Vicky with like Greg Vanny and she's like, Greg's ready. And I'm like, yeah, I let me, <laughs> and, and not her. She was doing a great job. Like she was and doing he, exactly what she was supposed to be doing. But me, I'm like, OK, what are we talking to Diego about? How do we wrap this up? Like, how do we do this? And let's be very clear. I had a nice Alicia Keys moment there at the very beginning, which was <laughs> I, I, you know, Alicia before it was actually Alicia Keys had a Josh Gessman moment. If we're really uh, with the Coachella, <laughs> with the Coachella uh, Valley tournament, I'd. It wasn't a tongue twister until I tried to say it until until Diego well, Fagundes was standing next to me while like I was trying to do this and like handing him stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm literally rolling through the intro going like pulled it down. Be like, hey, Diego, just give me a second. I got to do this intro. And then I wanted Kevin to like just talk for like 30 seconds. Just give me a little bit. And so Kevin, how are you doing? He's like, well, don't talk to me. Talk to her. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just talk for 30 seconds. Um, tall Kevin, he's got to he's got to work on the, tall the improv to make it work. But yeah, but but but, but it, it sounded good. I think knowing that behind the scenes, you're being a little hard on yourself. Right. But it is funny, you know. Here, it's just me and you, just me and you in the chat. It's easy. But once you get you know a crowd of people in front of you, then it's like the brain stops working. Uh, I've definitely been there before. So where yeah, <laughs> you get in front of a large group of people and you go, oh yeah, I forgot how to speak. I forgot how words and sentences uh, are are put together. So I definitely can feel where that was coming from. But to your point, Alicia Keys moment. She, she rescued it. The rest of the performance was solid. Was solid so right. again, Coachelli, a little, a little off, but everything, I think you saved yourself. I was just waiting. Redeemed, I was just yeah, waiting for Usher else. to hug me from behind. That was really what it was. So <laughs> I was, I'm sure that's what it was. No, it was great. And I really enjoyed it. But I mean, just action packed. And can we get shout out Tom Bogart as well? Um, I, I said this on Twitter. I'll say this. The first time I ever met Tom Bogart was, uh, well, really, if you would talk about the first time I really ever met Tom Bogart, it was just before I brought him on as a guest. Because I looked over at him and he gave me the nod and I was like, I nodded back. And that was the first time that we had met. The second was... time I met Tom Bogert was at, when I handed him a microphone and welcomed him to the show. Now, I know he's a pro. Always knew that. Never was never worried about any of that. Right. The whole mm -hmm. deal. But he came on and knocked it out of the park. I could have said at that point, I could have taken a 15 minute break and Tom yeah. could have hosted the show and we would have been fine. So that, um, that's a guy who knows his stuff for sure. Yeah, he sounded great as well. Here, Here is here's the, the best things you can say about Tom Bogert. One is he knows this stuff so much. It's ridiculous. I mean, you know, talk about roster rules and everything else. That guy knows it and he can he can spit it out. Two is seems like a great hang. Like you just want to hang out with Tom. So uh, if you ever see Tom Boger, buy him a drink, uh, hang out with him a little bit. Uh, and I'm sure you'll have a, had a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Um, we, we got a couple super chats already. We already got super chats. Oh, let's, yeah. let's do this. Um, I want to make sure I get it. Okay. So Philip is the first one, right? Uh, Philip $5 super chat. The galaxy video board in the 91 free was being worked on today. Looks much better. The galaxy really going around cleaning some stuff up. Tom Braun talked about, sort of the new logos and sort of the new dressing up and how the mm. the stadium's going to have all this energy and stuff like that. And by the way, shout out to Tom Braun, who was there whenever I started setting up and was like, hey, um, do you want to do you want to go for a ride in my golf cart? Like, I'll show you this whole place. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Tom, I want to. I just have to set up. I want to make sure I get set up. And he goes, you just let me know. I'm going to come over here. I'll give you a whole I'll give you a tour. And I'm like, I was going to that say that's that's VIP right there. I mean, there's people who pay for the VIP package, right? At the Coachella Valley Invitational, but getting a, to ride around in Tom Braun's golf cart, that's that's something you could which we never had about. time for. So I didn't get to do, but like Ugh. it was, I know I kick myself. It was one of those, Brilliant. um, Dan Beckerman stopped by and said, hi, which is always nice. <laughs> so we were like, Oh look, it's Dan Beckerman. Okay, cool. Uh, Phil Anschutz was there. Uh, I think I mentioned that during the podcast, Uncle but Phil. uncle Phil was there. Mr. A as he's known for around the, uh, the LA galaxy. We call him uncle Phil cause he's never going to mm. come on our podcast. But yeah. if, he, but if, <laughs> if Mr. Anschutz, uh, was around and, and in person, uh, very much not weekend at Bernie, it, by the way, I would like to point out. So that, okay. that perhaps, uh, that classifications a little more than unfair, uh, seems okay. perfectly fine perfectly lucid ready to rock and roll out there so um <laughs> right. you know that type of thing so it was really great it was really fun the galaxy you know the same it's sort of the, been the same this whole preseason which is uh starters play for a while or you know the the young guys play for a while the young guys give up goals the starters usually haven't given up too many goals they haven't scored a ton of goals um, yeah. but we'll talk about new york city in this as well um but that was great and then just getting out of there and and, and getting back home easy enough drive i mean uh none of that was too bad so um, that's sort of the stuff that we wanted to cover about Coachella. And again, thank you to everybody who came out. I, the only thing I want to do better if we do it next year, I want to figure out a way to pull in more of those people that were out there. Cause the stands were packed, Eric, the stands were packed. Okay. And I feel like they, like we were in, it looked like a really good spot and I still think it's a good spot. 
right? But we didn't do a good job of like being like, come this, like I should have had a sign, Some like rain. follow me to a live podcast right now. You know, where's Cosmo? We needed to enlist the Cos yeah. man. You, you needed a wrangler, you know, a wacky, wavy, inflatable arm guy. You needed something to wrangle it. Yeah, because I, I hear what you're saying. What What's the, the real estate saying? Location, location, location. It, so again, m- maybe it was a good spot. Maybe, you know, we could re- rethink where they put you if the galaxy, you know, it was they like, know the layout. They can, right. we can work on this. Now we have the notes right. uh, to, to move forward with right, it. Right, right. And it's sort of like being on Rodeo Drive, but like at the end, right? Like you're at a really good spot, <laughs> yeah. but like if nobody makes it all the way to the end, then you're not going to be there. People did think I was selling things though. So I could have sold you or, or, or Kevin, I'm sure. Um, Fair enough. Wouldn't have been hard. The big deal though is, is that uh, Herb, executive producer Herb was there. Um, and he, he gifted They're us gifts. Some, so yeah, some gifts. So, um, here, we'll do it, uh, do it this way. But, uh, these are, oh wait, that one's backward. Wait, no, this one's backwards. Sorry. It's okay. very hard with the camera and everything like that. <laughs> there it so, is. So here we Look are, those things. Our, our very own Funkos and Kevin got one too. Uh, you got one hammer. So, uh, I'm going to give this to you whenever you come out for the Miami game. So, uh, well, the, but executive producer Herb just doing the Lord's Big work. Shout out to Herb. Uh, yeah, he, his Herb, nephew he, was out there as well, so uh, it was great to see both of them. Yeah, I was gonna say Herb, Herb. If the super chats weren't enough, you know, with the Funko Pops, you know, talk about knowing us and, and something that's we're gonna be appreciative of. Got a very funny story. I know we were we're already you know 15 minutes in and we were not heavy on the Galaxy Talk, but just bear with me on this one. Uh, you know, I had a package arrive on Valentine's Day. I was like, hey, there's a package here. You know, talk to my wife. Do you know what this is? She's like, well, yeah, I know what it is, but uh, you know, I don't know that it's going to be, you know, land as as much anymore. And I go, well, well why is that? So the, the package arrived, and uh, my wife got me <laughs> a Funko Pop of myself, which, which is great. Valentine's Day. But unfortunately, her beat her to the punch. So technically, I think her legally is my valentine right. uh, this year so it's just it's the breaks it's the way it goes so my wife was a little bit unhappy so now i'm gonna have two funko pops to display on uh the display case here right. but big shout out to her big shout out to my wife for for the nice uh you know gesture as well right uh, it's definitely something that i'm appreciative of. herb is herb is awesome uh, a lot of great people who were there as well so it was great seeing people ran, ran into tucker lepley's dad by the way um that was that was a nice little uh little he's having a preseason well. uh, he's having a preseason and a half uh david two dollar super chat with the gal Galaxy players fight over Messi's jersey. No, uh, Jonathan, uh, ten dollars. That's a fun jump. game, though. It is play. like who's gonna who's gonna get it? Who's like, gonna get it? What do you, um, Ricky? The, Ricky, Ricky's fair. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, does, does the captain get first dibs on that? But I think Ricky is the no-brainer. Or or Audrey ha, has a claim to it. But I, I would imagine he's probably already met him and 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 gone through it. But that's, you could say the same for Ricky. Ricky. I'm telling you Ricky, that that would be if we're if we're playing that game. Yeah, don't overthink it. If we're playing that game, it's it's Ricky. Uh, Jonathan, ten dollars super chat. The live show was fantastic. The audio quality, audio quality was great. I had planned on trying to stream it live too. In fact, I had a whole setup to where the audio was actually going to go directly into the stream. All that. Um, guess what? In the middle of the desert, the cell reception ain't great. Um, and I sort of saw that and watching my phone overheat in 58 degrees, which by the way, <laughs> is totally the desert. It's 58 degrees outside, but it's so hot that you're like sweating and your phone is overheating at 58 degrees because the sun That's is just, weird. like, yeah. you know, like, like one of those. So, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, looked like a good time. I'm glad. And it seems like the people who were out there enjoyed themselves. So had a great time. Again, results aside, it seemed like it was a good, a good outing. Yeah, it was. Um, so, uh, so we can. Certainly put that behind us a little bit and uh, look forward to I am all for doing another live show before a galaxy game. Whenever I am, I am in. I love doing it. I got the I got the stuff. We can load it in the truck. I got a truck. I can load in a van down by the river. <laughs> we can we can do this. All right. Almost anywhere. Uh, I can do a live show almost anywhere. Uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight before we get too deep into the show uh, was that the uh, the L.A. Galaxy Unified team is getting ready for tryouts. The 2024 team tryouts. Um, that's at Dignity Health Sports Park coming up uh, on March 10th. That's 12 p.m. check-in, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. are tryouts. This is for ages 16 to 25 for Special Olympic athletes and their unified partners as well. So um, if you think, and I know a bunch of people who have been on these teams, and they've been a lot of listeners of ours, and so it's been great to see, and I love watching these games after uh, after the big games play, and they're out there on the field and staying around and watching these kids go out and get to play on the big field. I mean, I come, I, I'm jealous. I want to be on the big field yeah. too right um but this is a way to do that so uh you can register now um and the contact information is up there but contact at uh cal it's c-a-u-l-i-c-i-n-o at s-o-s-c dot org 
for more information. That's where you want to register. All right. So yeah. I'll leave it up there on the screen for a little bit longer so that way everybody can do it. But um, yeah, it's going to be a lot. Yeah, that's longer. what I was going to say. You can leave it up on the screen. And then if you're listening, you could always, you know, rewind or, or go to the YouTube, uh, you know, page and check it out. Right. I do always enjoy watching this. Having worked with Special Olympics in the past, you know, and, and some previous jobs that I've held, what a great organization to work with and to see the experience that these players get to have. They get a game day experience. They go and they play against, you know, other unified teams from other clubs. And it's just such a cool thing to see. And then you see some, you know, with the goal celebrations. And then when you have some of the first team players come out to watch them play, it's just such a special thing. So again, if you, if you know anyone who would benefit uh, from trying out and being a part of the squad, it's, it's really kind of special. And so, you know, b- being, previously on the outside kind of looking in seeing that it's open right now and available right. de- i definitely encourage anyone if that's uh something that you know your is going to be you know accessible to, to your loved ones or someone you know i definitely you know pass the word along because it is a very cool experience it, it's a great experience everybody should uh should give it a shot if you are within that age group i think if they just needed to extend that just a little bit in order to fit us in there Eric. we are just that 25 <laughs> is just barely i was gonna say who needs a sponsor right yeah that's a that's always a good one um by the way, Bob in the in the chat room says uh, that Josh Funko Pop has a good head of hair. What are you trying to say, Bob? What are you trying to say? Trying to say it's a little shiny up top here, maybe a little thin. The the forest is thinning. We we've gone through some deforestation, perhaps. Perhaps I was gonna say yep. that was the funny thing at uh, when we were at the coaches conference with Landon Donovan. We showed him the Galaxy Art Fire artwork, and uh, Landon's remark was, "Yeah, you gave me. A, he was generous with the hair. They give him more hair right. than maybe he needed to." Yeah. So. I Fair mean, enough. If, that's what you do. It's a, it's a generous rendering. Do you remember whenever we were doing our little things here and we were like, hey, you know, and we were like, maybe we could slim ourselves down a little bit. You know, why not? Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's just flatter say, ourselves. If you're having artwork done, flatter yourself. Yeah, what, I'm, I'm, I'm a cartoon. You don't need to make me, you know, right. true to size. No. You know, it doesn't have to be what to, no. to scale. No, <laughs> you're you're still taller than Kevin Baxter, by the way. So that's Fair always enough. good, too. Uh, by the way, uh, Miss Pink gave us a $20 super chat. Uh, she says, our favorite podcast. My husband saw the Funkos on the table at Coachella and he looked for them online. Couldn't find them. I had to tell them they were custom made. Now we need them in our life. Oh, see, that's great. It was, <laughs> I appreciate that, Miss. Uh, look at that. Now we have a new item in, uh, the, in the shop, right? right? Uh, <laughs> it was great. Afterwards, I got to take pictures with people, which is always the best part. I'm sorry. I could talk about Galaxy, and certainly I feel like that that podcast was information, information, and no like sort of fun time that we usually get to have in the live shows. But I, I'm glad that we did it, and it's perfect. It's perfect for what it needed to be there, and to get everybody in one spot and have all those guests on is is amazing. Um, but you know, it was great to be there afterwards and get to talk to people and joke around a little bit, take some pictures, you know, see some babies, you know, that type of thing. So, uh, it was always, uh, always fun to do that. Let's get to the LA galaxy, um, now and their midweek game against New York city. Now this was an interesting one cause you saw the starting lineup and you were like, Oh, there's not going to be any starters playing in this game. And you're like, you know, the whole deal. And what actually ended up happening was a second half full of starters and, and really sort of doing that. It makes sense. People were, I, <laughs> I don't understand some of the um, I, I don't understand sometimes the overreaction to the lineups in the preseason. Like you don't want them playing every three days like that's you, you want them to get some minutes and then get some training in and do it. They're trying to build up, you know, uh, their 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 physicality. They're trying to build up their stamina <laughs> for this. And so you can't just run them into the ground. That's not the idea. That was for earlier. You could run guys into the ground. Now you're sort of more into the let's taper off and finish up some of this stuff and and get it because we saw in the game before some guys going 90 minutes, right? We were sort of first starting to see uh, against Charlotte or excuse me, against Austin guys going 90 minutes. This was not that time, right? This was not the ability to go 90 minutes in this game because most of the guys who went 90 minutes are not going to be playing in this game, right? They, they didn't want to overextend or overstretch anybody, but there were guys who needed to get minutes. So if you look at this starting lineup with Bond, Nelson, Mavinga, Zavaleta, Fercranis, Cuevas, Parenti, Lepley, Ramos Jr., Miller, uh, and Bibu, uh, if you look at that, you would say, okay, there's not a lot in this and you would be correct. And if you watch the first half, there was not a lot in this, uh, LA galaxy went down to nothing. Bibu had a great chance to score a goal to make it two one at one point, uh, didn't convert on that, but really it was, uh, it was sort of, you look at this and say, okay, guys just getting minutes. And I think the big takeaways that we can look at from this starting lineup would be looking at Mavinga and Zavaleta together, because that is a pairing that you could see, right? Look at mm-hmm. Qu- Cuevas, you know, were they paying three in the back maybe? And then Cuevas has sort of been playing at right mid for a lot of this preseason. So, you know, are we getting enough of, of Cuevas in his natural position to sort of look at him? The, you know, you look at Tucker Lepley, who again, no matter when they play him, no matter what has happened, it's like they play him every single time for a, any amount of minutes that he wants to go. And the kid is just keeps, keeps performing quite honestly. Um, 
And then, uh, you know, you saw a guy like uh, Parenti in there who gave away a ball that ended up being a goal for the for, uh, you know, New York City. So you saw that and you saw that sort of early um, young guys in there and you're like, OK, there's not going to be much for this. Well, you get down to two, you get two nothing at halftime and literally we can go to, to like the next thing. Right. Is the L.A. Galaxy get two goals in the second half, one from Barry and one from Harbor Miller. Right. So Harbor Miller and Miguel Berry knock in two goals and all of a sudden the Galaxy are tied. This game ends up 2-2. But what did we learn from the second half? Because that's the part that I think needed the more focus. Um, you had, you know, Mar Martin Caceres come in for Miki Yamane. Miki Yamane has been solid every time he's played. Not a problem. He is ready to go. That's a yeah. lock right there. So you're like, OK, he, cool. He's, he's one of the players who has looked the most comfortable, does not look out of place. Right. Which is great to see. Right. So so you're like, OK, perfect. 100 percent in. Um, who else? Gaston Brugman gets his first minutes. Out. That is huge. It doesn't matter what he did, which, by the way, played perfectly fine. Had some just him being in there all of a sudden really turned some things around. You're like, oh, I remember this. That's how mm -hmm. that works. <laughs> so Gaston Brugman being there, probably not a starter whenever it comes to Miami time, but probably a guy who's going to see minutes in that second half whenever he comes yeah. in. So watch for Gaston Brugman. So that was a big thing to sort of watch. Um, Dayan Jovalic coming back was in this game. I don't even know if he touched the ball. Doesn't matter. He was back. He was running. He was trying to play. <laughs> That's a positive in there. You know, McCarthy took over for Jonathan Bond. Jonathan Bond had to play with the youngsters again. I do not know. And I cannot predict. And I was talking to people whenever I was at Coachella who the starting goalkeeper is. And Joe Tutino said he still feels like it's it's Jonathan Bond's position to lose, which is which yeah. is certainly a way to look at it. Um, but for me, McCarthy, uh, Michovic, Bond, you could flip a coin and, you know, roll a three-sided die. And if it lands on anyone, I wouldn't be surprised. So um, I don't think we have a lot um, that we've really been able to learn there about who Greg Vanny thinks is going to go there. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you want to read between the lines, I guess the one thing you could look into that is say, well, look at who started the game. And it seemed like it was mostly a second unit that was out there. And so you think, well, if Bond is out there with that unit, is that a sign that maybe Bond is involved with, um, you know, these secondary level players and maybe McCarthy is someone or, or Mitrovic is going to be the one who takes that spot. One of the things that I've been hearing is someone who hasn't been able to attend the games, but from people in the discord, people on uh, who have been kind of making comments about, uh, you know, the goalkeeping situation is that McCarthy in person really looks to manage the game maybe a he little does. bit better, kind of takes control of the situation. So from the fans, and you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt, because is it is it people who are over Jonathan Bond and are looking for any type of excuse and anything to latch on to to kind of move on from Bond? I agree with Joe Tatino. I think unless there's just some horrendous play, it's his job to lose. If it's close, I think you have to give it to the the, the incumbent who's been there. And then if things go sideways then things go sideways and you'll address that uh, when you get there. But to me, um, I, I think it is Jonathan bonds to lose, but it is, you know, promising. And it is a good thing that if things do go sideways, that that does look like there is someone who's going to be able to come in and, and fill those shoes. And it looks like McCarthy, you know, maybe just with the performances that he's put in uh, that he's going to be a little bit better going back to the results listening back and thinking back about the the live show that you had. The one thing that Vanny said that stuck out with me is, you know, the results don't matter as much as the performances. And then he mentioned, you know, of course you want to get in the good feeling of the results. And I know Kevin mentioned that, you know, the results are, are important. And I'm someone last year who with Vanny, you know, being more on the hot seat, I was like, well, results have to matter at some point, but I truly believe in preseason results don't matter. It is about the performances. Do you see positives from Gaston Brugman? Does Mickey Amane look like he fits in? And I think as, if, if they go, oh, and, and five or whatever it was, I think as long as you see those signs, th then you, you can be OK with it. And then when, obviously once the, the regular season starts, then you'll get going. One thing that does concern me is the lack of goal production. And part of that is because Jovalich just hasn't been on the field. So, right. again, if he's the one where they're hitching all their wagons to, if he's not on the field, then the goals are not going to come. That kind of makes sense. So then you're in a no win situation because then when the do, the goals do come and it's Miguel Barry and, and Harvard Miller, it's like, can you really celebrate that? It's like, do you say, well, hey, they won. They're, they're ready to go into the season. Well, those players aren't going to be starting they're you know, against Miami. Starters, yeah. So how can you say, how can you put weight into that when those aren't going to be the guys who are making the difference? So it's a lose-lose. You can, If you don't put weight into it, then you know you you're going to wait for the season to kind of you know be disappointed or or make it happen but if you if you do put weight into it then you're putting weight into players who are not going to be impact starters anyway so what are you really celebrating so i think that's why the results in preseason 
don't really matter. They can lose all the games. And as long as the individual performances are there, I think they have, you know, a lot to look forward to. I think once there's something to be said, when the lights get turned on and it's time and it's showtime, the galaxy kind of stepping up. And we've seen these players in these situations, Dayan Jovalich, Gaston Brugman, Ricky Pouge, when the time comes and their numbers get called on, they show up, you know, that's something right. that we've seen them do. And so that's something that I, I don't, I'm not as worried about some of these results in the preseason than maybe uh, some of the other rumblings. It's it's an easy thing to say, but I I really do feel that way. I'll say this: somebody mentioned this, and whenever I was out at Coachella, is great time to sort of just sit around, talk to people, you know, and BS and do that type of thing. It's it was really interesting to learn some stuff that's going on at the club and um, sort of get a little peek in behind things. I'll say that um, somebody mentioned that it seems like the LA Galaxy were certainly prepared to not put a lot of stock in preseason and to make sure that if injuries happen, they happen during the regular season, right? Like yeah. it was one of those, they, the goal for the LA galaxy and, and perhaps this is being as snake bitten as they were last year. And with guys getting back, like Caceres coming back with Brugman coming back with Ricky Pooge, who, um, you know, is, is, hasn't played, you know, now in a little while again, he's supposed to play this weekend is what we heard. Um, but Ricky Pooge coming back from injury, like all these injuries and guys coming back from injuries and, and that type of thing. Dayon Jovalic with the hit pointer. It seems like all, all they're really trying to focus on is that they have a healthy team whenever they play against Miami. That's it. They just want to have a healthy team. And quite honestly, they're actually trending in that direction. It's yeah. it's starting to come together. You got Jovalich getting time. You got Brugman. Caceres is, will probably be, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we can talk about it here in a second. Who are the starters for Miami if we're sort of going off? But, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Caceres and, and, and Yoshida next to each other for the start in Miami. That to me. Yeah. That to me is your starting back pair day one. It's it, a no brainer for me. And it feels that way, right? So um, that one makes sense to me. Uh, you know, I look at, I look, so I can sort of see the galaxy's mindset of let's just get healthy through this preseason. Mm -hmm. Let's not worry about the results. Let's not worry about a lot. We will do our coming together of everybody when the games matter. And the guys who I'm expecting to come back are all veterans. They've all played before. They've all, yeah. they've all been with this team. They know what I expect. Let's get them healthy to Miami. And then we will worry about everything from there. It, it's, it's, it's certainly something that we look at with Gabriel Peck possibly coming here next week. That's what Greg Vandy said on the show. Um, so, you know, he was supposed to go back to Brazil, into the visa, then visa out to there. And so it still looks likely that Gabriel Peck is going to be a starter for Miami, right? Whenever that mm -hmm. whenever that comes in. Um, we can talk about the next one is Joseph Paintsville. That one... But I, you know, it doesn't feel like that one's going to get across it's getting the line. tighter. Yeah, yeah. The window, yeah. the window's tighter and tighter. So, so you don't expect that. So now you look at Diego forget. Well, the good news is that the one guy who I am 100% <laughs> is ready locked in to play is Diego Fagundes. hundred percent. By the way, Gino Vivi is also locked in and ready to play. The kid has been, when they came on the second half, the energy that Fagundes and Vivi were sort of able to combine with and play. And then with Jovalich in there or Bibu or Barry or anybody who sort of combined in there, there was danger. They were creating offensive chances, which is something we haven't seen from them a lot in the preseason. They were controlling the ball in the possession based sort of way that the, uh, the LA galaxy like to do, by the way, shout out to Catamount who put out a, an article on corner of the galaxy called Vanny ball. We'll explain yeah, Vanny what, what, Vanny, is Vanny yeah, what is Vanny ball and how does it actually work? And what, sh what does success look like? Right. And that type of thing. So, um, check that out whenever you can, but I feel like that's the things that we sort of learn. You want to talk about things I learned Miki Yamane ready to go. Maya Yoshida played more minutes than anybody else in the preseason so far. That's which is why he didn't play in this last game ready to go. Um, you know, I think it's going to be Caceres in there. Aude and Nelson total coin flip for me. I actually think Nelson has played better than Aude, but I imagine Aude gets the start. I don't think there's much of a difference there that you're really going to mm -hmm. sort of do that. So the kid's going to get the start against Miami. So that's my start. I mean, you know, again, we talked about goalkeeper. I have no idea. I, I if I'm guessing right now, it's probably Jonathan Bond, but um, mm -hmm. that type of thing. You know, looking through the midfield right now, probably Cerio, uh, whenever you're talking about starters, Cerio, um, Delgado, and Pooj are probably your starters against Miami, and Brugman's going to come in in that second half, right? Um, you know, outside of the wing, Fagundas on one side, Peck on the other side, uh, Pooj in the middle, and then it's going to be Jovalich starting up top. To me, that's the starting lineup. I don't think there's much argument or wiggle room in a lot of that stuff unless people <laughs> get injured, right? Yeah, it, it, it's there. And, and so when you go to the squad rotation, you mentioned it, there's going to be opportunities for a game congestion, schedule congestion later on. And so they can worry about getting all the starters out there and, and figuring it out at that time. But uh, right now, the point is not to risk injury. So I think anyone who's been kind of following along, it's it's pretty obvious who the starters are going to be. And then when Paintsall shows up, he's going to slot into that Fugunda slot. And then 
talking about injuries and getting healthy, Fagundas becomes your Swiss army knife and kind of making it work wherever you need to, to go. The one thing that you do see from the preseason, and you mentioned it with Gino Vivi, Tucker Lepley, uh, Gino Vivi, uh, Harbor Miller, these players are getting lots of minutes. And so this is their, this is their opportunity right. to show up. This is their regular season to say, I'm someone you can count on. I'm someone you can put in those positions. And I think, that's what you want to see in, in the preseason. Who is going to announce themselves that they're ready uh, to be a part of the squad? And so that's the promising thing as well. Maybe, you know, if you, you're not seeing enough of your starters, then maybe that's not your cup of tea. But this is, you, you don't want your starters, you know, what's my line? You know, peaking at the peak at the right time, don't peak too soon. Right. You don't want your starters peaking <laughs> at preseason at Coachella. Let them get healthy and get and they'll figure it out later. Let your, your youngsters, your players who need something to prove, let them prove it while they have the minutes on the field. Yeah, uh, going to be very interesting to to see how that. I'll tell you this: Harbor Miller has has certainly every time Vanny talks about anybody talks about Harbor Miller coming in and, and sort of showing. It was great to see Harbor score his uh, first goal there, and then you saw him hugging his mom and dad afterwards. Yeah, that was a cool cool video that S- they put out. Such a fun like thing. And by the way, the ball dropped right to him, right in the middle. It was great. I'm glad he scored, but like it was it was all these things. He was in the right place, right time. The ball dropped and he scored. Um, you know, Barry's sort of similar that the ball sort of bounced around a little bit in the box and it was like right at his foot and he just knocked it in. Um, you know, Fagundes had a couple. Again, I just want to see Fagundes. The only thing I want from Fagundes is for the balls to start hitting the frame. I, I don't care if they get saved, but they need to start hitting the frame because he's just a little wide, a little wide, a little high, like that type of thing. He's just barely missing. And I imagine that as the season sort of gets go, that Diego's going to start burying those. Um, Counter Counterpoint. Yes. Last season, it seemed like the Galaxy were trying to pass it into the goal. Mm-hmm. So I'll take someone shooting it, even if it's going wide at this point, getting in the habit of doing that. We, we saw the Galaxy try to do way too much, uh, you know, to look for that perfect pass and not right. pull the trigger. So I'll counterpoint that maybe it is okay that we're seeing him pull the trigger. Let, let's get to our preseason goal leaders because we love to oh, Remember my, when Kevin the, Cabral was the top this list? Do you remember <laughs> that? The good old days? Uh, Miguel Berry with two goals, Diego Fagundes, uh, Gino Vivi and Harbor Miller with one goal. That was your thing. I'll say this as we look at the results for the LA Galaxy again, no win, no win yet in preseason, right? You look through all this and the LA Galaxy have scored five goals and, and against was 11. Um, I, I can say that the majority, I think all but two or three of those goals were, uh, were against Academy kids. Um, whenever you look at the against and you can say what you want and that's certainly uh, a, a bright starry outlook on stuff um, but that's what I see I'll say this if if I'm looking at and evaluating the guys who have gotten time and who have not shown me that they are ready to play Chris Mavinga is on that list he's not ready to yeah. play he puts the LA Galaxy in peril whenever he is playing in that center back position pulls himself out of space um, exposes the back line it's it's shocking to me how quickly the LA Galaxy defense changes as soon as Mavinga gets off the field. And that's not, you know, what is it like a plus minus whenever you're on the field, yeah. right? Yeah, like he's like a <laughs> minus 40 at this point, right? Whenever he's on the field, the Galaxy give up a bazillion goals. Um, the first goal that they gave up in this New York City game was a, a miscommunication between Mavinga and uh, Zavaleta. Zavaleta stayed on and played for, I think, almost maybe the rest of the the, um, the the day. He played like 90 minutes, that type of thing, and was really fine defensively as soon as Mavinga got subbed off, right? So. Which- which, which is interesting because what, what do you do in that situation when, you know, you have a player who you need as a depth piece, you know, you're going to need to lean on at some point, but it's, you know, so I think someone, uh, Mr. Provino in the chat called him a chaos merchant. And so again, <laughs> when, when you're a chaos merchant, right. it, you know, at what point are you better off, you know, slotting Brugman back right. there, slotting Delgado back there yeah. when, when you need someone, it, at what point does it not become worth it even putting him on the field? And that's, that's really an unfortunate place those, those, uh, for him to be as a player. Those are the things you don't do in preseason though, that you're not going to pull yeah. that guy and be like, no, you're not going to, no, we're going to let you play and work if, it out. Yeah. Work yeah. it out. Figure it out. The, the crazy thing about Mavinga is, and I was actually talking with some people around the club about him as well, is that he's like a one or an eight, right? Like you either get an eight performance out of him where he's stopping everything and you're like, oh man, he's playing really well. But usually he's playing well because he's getting his emergency defending right, which he's always putting himself in emergency defending. Well, but, right? Because there's always an emergency. There's yeah. always an emergency, right? He's but There's there's something to be said about guys like Miki Yamane who have been playing this and basically we really haven't talked about him much, right? Like yeah. we, we keep saying he's playing well, but give me individual things he's done. No. It's about positioning. They don't, they're not attacking down his side. They're like, no, we're not going to go that way. That's Miki Yamane. 
especially whenever you put them next to Yoshida. The spacing is right. The angles are right. Everything seems real solid, right? Um, no emergency defending. I don't like to see defenders who have tackles. Like, don't show me a defender who's like, leads the team in tackles. It's like, oh, well, that's horrible because what are you doing to have to be <laughs> yeah. able to put yourself in those positions, right? Yeah, um, that's one of those counterintuitive things. When you look at the stat sheet, you want to sort by tackles to see who's the best defender, but that's not necessarily true. I think it's Paulo Maldini who's famous for saying, if I've had to make a slide tackle, I've already, it's too late. I've made a mistake. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's one of those things. It, yeah, it's totally that. So, and then you go over to the other side and you see Mavinga. Um, in there again I thought Zavaleta played fine for what it for what it was so we we've seen this now and we've seen the preseason I am feeling better about the defense whenever I see them play as an actual unit I'm like yes okay cool that makes some sense to me uh, I'm feeling better about the midfield especially with Brugman coming on you're gonna have Puj and Brugman you're gonna have Fagundes on one side you're gonna have Peck on another side cool like it done solid I'm I'm ready for that Still worried about striker, whether that's Barry yeah. or Jovalich. And I think that that's the position the LA Galaxy have put themselves in, which is yeah. we, we are going to rely on Jovalich. And that's our plan. And we were uneasy about this before the preseason. The preseason hasn't given us any reason and, and was not ever going to give us any reason not to because, uh, you know, I, we, I think back to Farai Mutatu setting the preseason on fire when he was on that. So I think we we had the Efren Alvarez breakout player of the year this is the year we're going to give that award. And I think for the preseason, we should give the Farai Mutatu golden boot right. uh, to Miguel, Miguel Barry. You know, he's in that. So again, there's still one game to go, Eric, just chill game, out. Okay. okay. So Jovalich could have his hat trick. That's right. To take over. Okay. That's right. Okay. But, but I, I agree. I, I'm worried about the, where the goals are going to come from. Right. I, I, as much as I want Jovalich to, to be successful, the, the stink from last season is still there. And so you just worry, you know, is, is he, going to come out struggling or is right. he going to be able to get it right because that's the thing i i, I can't say with confidence the Jovalich is going to have a, a great season i i want him to the the pieces are in place for him for that to happen but i don't feel that confidence like oh we're we're cooking we're in good shape like this is going to be the year for Jovalich to get it right. i just don't have that that fire inside of me do, so that makes me a little bit nervous do you find it useful to, uh, one is i kind of admire the fact they're just going to roll the dice with it like it's kind of like hey he's our guy we're rolling yeah. dice with him. I kind of admire just that blind faith. And by the way, it's not blind faith because they've seen him score goals and he scored goals for the LA Galaxy. Mm -hmm. It just last year was not. Hey, guess what? Last year was not a good year for the team either. So, I mean, there's an argument to be made that he didn't get the service the whole deal. Now, I'm with you. There's stink on him. So part of me is like, that's a little ballsy. Go out there and be like, that's mm -hmm. our guy. And but they're vocal about it. That's our guy. We're going to take him. Uh, the other part of that that I kind of like even though it's very risky and we're also, this is like, you know, you're trying to, you're, you're trying to play, uh, you know, uh, 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 two aces. You're trying to play against two aces with, you know, uh, two twos, you know, it's like, it's like, it feels like you're behind whenever you're trying to do this, but could it work out? Yeah, it could Two flop out on the board and then you're, you're, you're there. there. It's all, it's all good. You're there. Yeah. Maybe that's too optimistic. You know, maybe you have a two, right. You know, yeah. it's one of those. Um, but I, I feel like that we're going to get to know. This is going to be it. There's not going to be any doubt about this. We're not going to, it's going to be 10 games in. We're Jovalich, going to find out. Jovalich is either going to be good or he's going to be bad. You're <laughs> going to know. This is, he's been given all the opportunities. Um, and I'm interested to see how Peck plays. I'm interested to see how the third DP plays, right? I mean, yeah. there's a whole bunch that we're still missing that it's probably going to determine the success of Jovalich too. And so yeah. with all those things, I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see what it is. And the fact that we haven't got to see Jovalich in the preseason it, it adds, a, I, I think it makes people nervous. And I, I, I kind of almost like well, that too. It's like, nobody knows what he, what's going to come out of this. But it's also why you shouldn't throw stock into it. Because if Jovalich is who we're riding with for the season and the, the Galaxy haven't played him during the, or he hasn't gotten very many minutes and the Galaxy aren't scoring, why should that worry you? Because that's not who, the players who are out there are not who you're relying on to score anyway. So it's 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 one of those things. Are we trying I'm to talk ourselves the, into, the, a better, into a better spot <laughs> with it? You know, the I'm whole gonna, deal? I'm going to, I'm going to do the hammer special where I argue against myself Okay. Uh, with feeling uneasy about Jovalich. We don't need to look very far in the past. Chicharito having the horrendous season that he had and the issues that he had, the two goals and just the absolute flop of a season, his comeback season after that, when he was hungry and motivated and wanted to get that stink off of him was his best season for the LA galaxy. So 
who's to say that Jovalich knows where he that standing is and that he you know he did, maybe doesn't have the marketing team behind the hype videos that right. Chicharito had we were watching the Rocky Four montages maybe we're we're not seeing that but maybe that is happening behind the scene and Jovalich is going to come out guns a blazing for his comeback season uh, a la Chicharito 2021 um, I was going to say like there was no Robbie Keane didn't fly in to give Jovalich a number or anything like that. We didn't we didn't <laughs> see that. Right. That hasn't happened yet. Um, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm here for it. Like one I want to I want to point it out is uh, I was talking to some of the players, some of the guys and like they're like, OK, can we be done with preseason? Like this is this is stupid now. Like, And that's <laughs> this is the point you yeah. want it to go to is like I want to start kicking people for real. Like this is getting ridiculous. Um, So. Uh, there's certainly a part of that that I that I sort of respect and and see in there as well. So um, that's that's what I took away from it. Um, somebody was talking about Daniel Aguirre, who I thought has been playing very well, and it's good to see him back after that. Johnny Perez was in there and played a little bit as well, and I think he was coming back from an injury. I know he wasn't talked about a whole bunch, but Perez is gonna I feel like gonna get some minutes here um, as well. So uh, you know the the whole thing about Jovalich for me is is like first season scores a whole bunch of goals, second season you know it's like it's like this back and forth, right? And you're sort of like which one is he? Like people are trying to say, oh well he was yeah. last year. Last year is what he was. Well what what about first year? What was that? Well it was just off the bench. It doesn't count. Like it's almost like it doesn't count. I don't care if you're banging in goals. It counts, right? Goals are goals. <laughs> goals are goals. It's hard to do. Yeah. As a defender, I never got to score them. All right, that was a, that was a thing. So I know I know how hard that can be um, to to see that. So um, that was something. the The big deal we talked about everybody getting healthy, but one person who's not healthy. We have to talk about the injury to Jalen Neal. Um, this was announced over uh, at Coachella, um, and basically, uh, I didn't get to go to this press conference because I was getting ready to start the show. Um, but Jalen Neal out six to eight weeks with an abdominal strain. So uh, he went to go see a specialist uh, because he was like eighty percent, but he wasn't feeling like a hundred percent, and it was sort of the stall out during his return to play. And that's when they noticed that he had an abdominal strain as well. Um, they don't know. It was probably probably picked up while he was in his return to play. I don't mm. like seeing these things stack for a young player like yeah. this. Um, and so it's especially when he's been trying to get out of it and it's just the, right. the barriers keep building in front. And that, that was a, that was a brutal letdown because I think with how he started last season, People were very excited for him to come back and be right there along y- Yoshida and maybe split time with Caceres. So again, th- that was brutal when that news came out. Yeah, it's not a uh, it, it's not what you want to hear about. Um, you know, a young player. Uh, that's for sure. So, um, so you had Yovel or you had uh, Jalen Neal with that, but everybody else really sort of feels like and and if I can. Um, sort of, I, again, pretend that I, I look at everybody who's coming back. It feels like the Galaxy are on the cusp of getting healthy, um, which is uh, a, a good thing to sort of see. Uh, the other thing they're on the cusp of, though, is we have to talk about Joseph Paint Seal. Here we go again. Now It just won't die. It just won't die. Which, by the way, <laughs> I, we've been saying it, and I know it's not sexy to say, right? I'm like, mm-hmm. don't, it's not over. And <laughs> it was funny because I saw whenever the news had sort of spun back up and basically what had happened is there were reports that were coming out of Belgium. Um, Bob uh, Faison had had mo- a lot of the really good ones. We've been keeping an eye on him. Uh, but yeah, Gink this is, about, is the account that's been pretty uh, accurate the whole, all the steps of the way. Yeah, but basically came out and said um, Genk is about to lose Joseph Paint. So the LA Galaxy clubs have almost reached an agreement on the amount that exceeds the original limited sum, 8 million years. So that's $8.5 million. The sum then we find find out because Tom Bogert was out there uh, uh, correcting things with, by the way, uh, be, once this was put out, uh, I was able to sort of ask and say, is there anything that's, you know, not true about this? And basically I was told, no, there's nothing that's not true. So I can confirm this report as well. Um, before we get to Tom, because then Tom was able to do one better. I actually told Tom that I curse him out a lot, but it was only because I like him. Um, you know, I was like, dang you, Tom. That's not really what I say. But um, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, Tom Bogart was able to uh, to come out there and say sources the LA Galaxy and final stage of deal to sign Gane and winger Joseph Pencil from Genk fee around nine million. So remember, it was about eight, eight and a half. And now it's at nine million. Not 100 percent done yet, but very close. Uh, Pencil's again, 26, had 17 goals, 14 assists for gank last season that was his season or, or career high um last year and this year he has six goals four assists and 23 appearances i think gank playing a little more frustrated this year they sell a lot of players eric they have sell a lot of guys um and so when you see that they sell people it's hard to sort of 
to me, that's a hard team to to sort of be like, oh, we're going to have success because they're constantly selling their best players, which is how they afford more players, which is like you keep turning, but they'll turn everybody. They have two or three injuries to the midfield and they're going to sell Joseph Paintsill. Like if it was this with the LA Galaxy, the chat room would be ready to kill people, right? It would be yeah. it would be one of those. Um, but, but that's how a lot of these, if you're not in, you know, the big three, big four leagues, then this is how you sustain yourself as someone who, you know, <laughs> follows the Portuguese league rather loosely. They're notorious for selling players at, you know, outrageous fees after getting them to, you know, have success in their club. So are, you know, Portuguese clubs powerhouses in Europe? No. But do they sell right. like crazy? And do those players eventually <laughs> become powerhouses? Yes. Yeah, so Gink is one of those teams where you always hear hear their name in the mix but you're they're not necessarily a powerhouse so the the interesting thing nuance and i don't know if you have uh any of those tweets where it was mentioning that you know his locker was was cleaned out he was wearing a teammate's uh you know beanie Hats. because yep. his stuff yeah his his belongings had all been cleared out so it, it this even though the pencil rumors are not new uh, it's this seems like it's really reached uh you know a, a pretty new level where that we could pretty much you know start downloading uh, you know, JP on Spotify and start singing those songs because I think I think it's pretty eminent right now. I did. I I mean, I did point this out <laughs> in the Discord that uh, that our Discord was like, here's this playlist, like start racking those 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 views up, right? Um, so without you is his new release. We actually played some of that on one of the. the by the way, that's just so wrong of us to even pretend that we are allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but JP uh, putting some stuff together. This feels like it's close. As a matter of fact, there may have been him traveling either to day or tomorrow actually to LA we don't have confirmation of that um, but that was sort of what the timeline was thinking um, I, again I don't think he makes it in time for Miami uh, in fact I would be surprised if he makes it for the next game like that sort of seems more realistic he's going to be in shape he's going to be ready to mm -hmm. go whenever he comes so that's not the problem it's about visas and Peck. everything else yeah just get him in Peck Peck Vanny told me he was worried about him being tired more than anything else right from playing all which is games. such a Vanny thing to say because <laughs> <laughs> you know because you you know, you have a guy who's in form and he's more worried about the fatigue. No, if he's ready to go, he's young. He's, you know, he, he's spry. He lasted a whole season. You know, you, you ride that, you keep it going. So, um, that's what, that's, what's up with uh, JP again, uh, deal apparently not a hundred percent done, but very, very close from the last I heard. Um, and so this is at least headed towards the finish line. This is the thing where I tell you that when we, when we tell you to hang in there, it's because I told you how many times did we say it, it's not dead. I'm just, I can't kill it. I would like to kill it for you and tell mm -hmm. you that it's over. And by the way, there are accounts out there saying, just isn't happening. This isn't happening. And it's like, nobody I had talked to had ever said this is not happening. And as a matter of fact, I, I said it during the live show. I've said it on this show many times. The quiet confidence of the galaxy was sort of kept continuing. It was sort of like, they were telling me, calm, calm down. Calm down. It's, we're, we're, we're working on it. Everything feels, everything feels pretty good. We feel pretty good. We think we're going to get there, right? That type of thing. That's the, the reassurance that we thought we were constantly getting. And it was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sit there. And even if it means we were quiet, even if it means on this show that we don't have a rumor to talk about, because there was another, I think the Abu Kar, um, one is out there and yeah, I, I, I haven't seen anything on that that says that that's a real rumor. Um, like that type of thing. And so it's like, we're not going to talk about that because it's not a real rumor. We will and, talk and about those, JP. And it's one of those things where maybe, you know, the galaxy and the people who are making those deals felt good about it. But sometimes there's, there's some gamesmanship that goes on. So sometimes we heard that they went back to, with another deal to Sosa. So, so right. maybe sometimes this, these are some chess moves that are happened. So it's possible that it was less likely as time went on. And then it became more likely again, you know, things change. It's, you know, it's not, we don't live in a, a world of black and whites. There's a lot of gray area and kind of chess moves in between. So I don't doubt that maybe it was, a, you know, more, it was in doubt in between their first offer. And then they thought it wasn't going to happen. And maybe they started poking those feelers or, putting the word out there, you know, to, maybe that's why the Bubakar news is coming out now, because maybe that's something that they put in motion right. before, uh, you know, the paint still was closer to being across the line. So it's just one of those things where, and, and to your point, until they say it's not happening, it's uh, we're moving on. We've, which I think we heard with, um, uh, one of the first players that they was, was Solari. I think mm -hmm. Solari was the river play player where they, so, so they said Solari, yep. we're rejecting it. It's done. And, and, I think both parties were pretty clear that, that, that there was no action happening there, but you never saw 
the button be put on the paint sole situation. So that's what gave you hope a little, a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, they, it looks like they got it across the line. Galaxy at 23 players. Here's the interesting thing. You talk about Will Koontz um, and sort of where he sees the roster and how it's going. Uh, talk to him at Coachella. They talked about the U22. Uh, we said, I said, what do you think about the U22? He goes, I don't think it's a position we need to fill right now, which is uh, GM speak for we're going to fill it in the summertime. Um, <laughs> but also we have some some things to do with salary cap and to move things around. How do I say this without sounding condescending? I'm going to try very hard. If you, I know, right? <laughs> no, just yeah, yeah, I say go the other direction. You say be super say, condescending? Make it sound super okay. condescending, yeah. Listen, okay? <laughs> Every team in Major League Soccer should be up against the cap. Every team, you should be maximizing the cap space every single time. doesn't mean there's not flexibility within contracts within maximizing the cap. So if you're asking me, Josh, are the LA Galaxy going to be up against the cap? I'm going to say yes, absolutely, 100%. In fact, they may be close to it right now with 23 players on the roster, another DP coming in, which is going to be another 600 and something thousand dollars that will eventually come in and hit that salary cap. Are the LA Galaxy going to be roster compliant whenever it shows up? Yes, 100%. They'll be roster compliant on for next Friday whenever it's roster compliance time. Um, I think that they currently have 10 internationals and nine spots, but they have to buy another spot if they're going to put uh, uh, Joseph Pantzel on. So that's going to happen. And we expect Gino Vivi is probably the odd man out there and he slides down or somebody gets a green card we didn't know about. That's all. That's always. A, a and it's also very possible that, you know, as you get closer to roster deadline day that, you know, we have spare international slots and maybe they're able to get two international slots and they're able to keep VV in or or maybe they get those extra international slots in anticipation of someone coming in the summer and to make sure that they have that, uh, you know, get, get lock in your better price now instead of, you know, being up against it and maybe paying more later right. on in the season. You know, there's, there's some thought process behind that, that maybe there's still more international slots uh, to be bought even before the season starts. The, the, the thing that's interesting though, is to look at 23 players on this team right now. That doesn't count Lepley who, um, we should point out, and I am very bad at pointing this out. Yes, he played at UCLA. He also played a lot for Sporting Kansas City's uh, USL side um, there. He is a professional. You can see it whenever he's out there. So Lepley could be one of those guys who fills in another spot. That could be 24. There's six roster spots. You have Painesville. That's 25. You have five roster spots remaining. I mean, there is, it actually is, the, the roster, once you start adding a couple pieces, actually is pretty filled out. But you're still looking at, you know, sort of what the LA Galaxy need. Um, talking to Will Koontz, doesn't think there's anything more on the defense that he wants to do right now. Not right now, right? Uh, looking at where he is on the midfield, I think they're eventually going to get a U22 player that's going to find a midfield spot. We talked about Rukovina, I think, was one of the guys we had sort mm -hmm. of looked at earlier, and I think that went didn't end up going uh, anywhere, and so that sort of died off. But the Galaxy will look to use that U22 spot. Now, that could be they're going to use that U22 spot as a striker's position in the summer because they're like, hey, I, that. There, there needs to be some help, right? I mean, You, you get Dayan Juvalich 2.0. That's what it feels like, because that's when he was first brought in and make that impact. So yeah, to me, that that seems more likely because it seems like the defense is pretty set. The midfield is pretty set. Uh, you don't want to mess with your starting wingers if they're DPs. I don't think you're going to you know go and make a big splash uh, in terms of a depth, depth piece. I think striker is going to be wherever that U22 goes down the line. It feels like that's the direction. Even if Jovalich is doing great, you want to backfill. Right. And move in that direction. So I, to me, that the way the everything's lining up, it seems like an attacker is going to be uh, what's on the grocery list later on. The LA Galaxy have a bunch of events coming up. We want to sort of hint at those as we uh, go through here. Uh, the Galaxy have a bunch of stuff coming up on Sunday. Empire Strikers LA Galaxy night. Um, they're going to have uh, on Monday uh, LA Galaxy flash tattoos. I saw some of the designs and stuff. That looks like fun. I think they're sold out of spots already. It was like a fifty dollar tattoo, and you could get. I knew you were going to fly out, Eric, because you know, you know what the the. What is it? Lo locally grown, globally known. That logo. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. So uh, again, not right. a tattoo guy, but that, that if I were to get a logo, that's right. the one I would have gotten. But the left like cheek those, or the right those, cheek? I, I would have on you your know, face. Surprisingly, <laughs> I would have gotten both cheeks because it, they're it's round. You know. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Makes some sense. <laughs> Uh, El Pescador LA Galaxy paint night uh, is happening as well uh, on Wednesday 40% off the team on store online that's where we found out the name of the kit because it's not going to include the Angelino kit uh, that is coming out um, so that one's sort of coming up there uh, player meet and greets on Thursday uh, and then they're going to do Friday all day is LA day right so again Galaxy Gear Friday next Friday for sure that one is in uh, and then on Saturday at Randy's Donuts LA Galaxy Donuts um, on Saturday that might be fun maybe I wonder if I could, hmm. 
They've done that. They, they've done that every year. That's always a fun time. They usually have a player go down there and help with the donuts in the morning. So again, Galaxy Week, always a fun time. El Pescador, you know, who who doesn't have a fun time at El Pescador and Carson? So again, that's seems like it's going to be a fun time. So this is always, again, like I said, love is in the air, MLS is in the air, Galaxy time. It's this is this is the most one of the most exciting times of the year. Okay, are you ready? Should we take a look at the at the details of the kit? This is Let's this do is it. it. Remember, I was time. gonna I was gonna give you breaking news. The LA Galaxy will announce the, their new kit on Friday, but then they told everybody, so it wasn't breaking news. <laughs> Oh man, so close! The LA Galaxy crest. You can see the uh, the the ghost sash sort of in there. What is it? I think somebody called it a negative space sash, and I kind of maybe it's not a ghost. Maybe an inverse an, yeah, yeah, sash. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in there, there are some details just in this crest that should be paid attention to. Uh, pointed out on our Discord because I'm not smart enough to look at this stuff. To me, it looks like an LA Galaxy crest. I was like, okay, whatever. Um, and I, you know, I usually don't get into to that too much. Uh, you were asking if the stars were white. I believe they're yeah. silver, but it's sort of the lighting makes them look white. Um, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. Uh, but there are some little details here, some little refinements. One of the things that you can certainly notice isn't on the on the Galaxy badge as it comes across. It's clipped. On the side, it has those little step pieces, gives it a little flair. It's very subtle. It's just mm-hmm. these little steps on there. So that was a little a little refinement that you see there. The other big thing that was sort of highlighted was the, uh, the little stars or the white dots in the crest that are sort of like stars. They're up and down. They're vertical sort of stripes with stars. Um, so it, you can see that in there, too. I... Man, they always make these look so good whenever these yeah, like the, the te- promo shots come out. It finally now it's like now we're gonna see the <laughs> beauty shots, right? Because before we've been seeing all of like the leak stuff, right? Like this young lady who I believe was in an LA Galaxy promo and somebody snapped a picture and that's how you uh you got to see the kit <laughs> for the first time. So you can see that. But it's like that's that's like in the wild. There's a little shake, there's a little shimmy to the camera, right? It's not perfect. And then Total Galaxy <laughs> put this one out there again. It's a, it's a little rough, it's like not perfect, like you, you can't see it. And then you start to see the beauty shots, the hero shots. Um, yeah. in here and you're like okay there's some details in this that I think I'm, I'm really going to like yeah the the authentic kits and there's a little bit of buzz going around that because of how expensive they've gotten now the prices yep. seem to have gone up it looks like they're going to be around if you want an authentic kit uh, you know with it with a number and a name set and all the badges it's going to be you know around 200 bucks which which is it's it's pretty rough uh, in terms of you know what what kits cost you know, four or five years ago, you could have been half that cost to get an authentic kit. But the difference in the authentic kit is in the details, the texture on the badge. Uh, like you said, the clipping. What I really liked about uh, that is, you know, when we talk about a refresh or a redesign, it's not that, but it does look like it's more of a scarf, you know, across the front when uh-huh. you have to think about the scarves that are there. And then with the stars in the background, of course, with the galaxy, you have the quasar as the center of the galaxy and then all of the stars around it. It just kind of fits with the brand. So the one thing that I will say is sometimes the texture on the brand, on the, on the, on the Jersey, uh, on these badges, it's not a permanent thing. It's could just be for the year whenever they wear this kit. But if this was a direction that they were going where they did want to make some of these subtle changes, I, I feel like it's a hit um, in, in terms of how it looks. And then we, we've talked about the look and the sash and the inverse sash or whatever you want to call it. I think it's a great look. I love the yellow and white detail. That's right. something that the Galaxy haven't done in a while. I think the blue stripes on a white jersey can get kind of old and kind of dated. So this just gives you something a little bit different, a little bit of a refresh. Instead of the regular sash, you go the inverse sash. So this just feels like they, they, they took a splash, went in a different direction which is needed. There's only so many variations that you can do of a white shirt. So I think in, in terms of how to make it different, how to make it pop, I, I feel like they, they knocked it out of the park with this jersey. It feels it feels nice. I, I mean, you know, I sort of, and if you can see behind me here, I'll sort of, I'll, I'll lean out of the way a little bit. But, um, you know, over the years, I've, I've gotten a few jerseys and been able to throw some things together. So um, there's been some great designs on this. Even... It's funny because looking back on I me, mean, remember Night Navy? Whenever we were like, man, I hated that thing. I actually, I was, I, I was the one guy who liked Night Navy. Yeah, again. yeah. Well, congrats. you know what? Just say that you like every kit because eventually people usually That's come fair. around. By the way, when they're like thirty bucks, everybody loves that kit, right? Like it's like, well, you know. That, that that's the and, and I'll say this if you, if you're unhappy with you know the kits costing what they cost, I think a lot of people have kind of become hip to the fact that you know you can get an authentic kit 
that's going out of season as they reload. Like right now, you'll probably be able to get the City of Dreams kit at a pretty good price if, if, if this was the time to move in on it. And so I think people are starting to figure that out. So I think if that becomes the trend, then you know MLS and Adidas, they're going to figure out, okay, people are not buying these at the price that they're listed on now. So again, if you are willing to hold hold the line and not necessarily go and buy it right away, then maybe that is something uh, that can make the difference. Because the bottom line, the reason why they're charging so much is because people are buying them. So again, if you don't buy, you know, we saw what happened with the boycott last season. If you don't buy it, then of course, then that's going to create an impact and there's going to have to be some type, uh, you know, push is going to have to come to shove at some point. So that's the one thing. People have kind of become hip to that. So if that's your move and you're willing to wait for it, I would kind of wait. I've, I've held off on... Uh, you know, the, the away kit from last season, because I know that eventually, you know, that's going to start to go out of season and you're, that's going to drop. And so I think that's something if you're, if you're patient uh, it goes back to the night Navy as well, eventually you come around, maybe you don't like it now, but then you see it in action. Someone mentioned, maybe they get the six star added to it next year. And then that's when you can start moving uh, and getting it. So, you know, di- different preferences. That's the funny thing with Jersey. You're never going to make everyone happy. Some no. people are, are not happy with the way it looks and, and year to year, uh, you know, maybe <laughs> your galaxy fandom gets in the way and you end up liking it more than maybe it really deserves. But again, this is one of those things where you can't, you're, you're not going to, you're, you're not going to fight the system and say, well, they shouldn't, they should have a different kit and this and that every, this is the way the world works now where there's new kits every year. So, you know, you can, you can buy into it and enjoy, enjoy it for what it is, call out the design and kind of move in that direction. Or you could say, you know, Jersey things are not for me and you've probably turned it off after our, uh, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of Jersey talk. Anyway. Right. <laughs> Very well. Good. Uh, $2 super chat from, uh, Luis. Uh, thank you for that. Appreciate, uh, your super chat, Michael, uh, $2 super chat show, uh, shows we should have kept Billy Sharp talking about Dayon Jovalich and the whole deal. There was, I don't disagree. there was risk in keeping Billy Sharp too. Whenever you have somebody who's as old as he is, you would expect that he was fine. The whole deal. I really liked what I saw from him, but can you get 34 games out of, or, you know, the amount of games that you want to put on those don't know. Um, but apparently the, the price, uh, that he was going to come back at was at least significant enough that the galaxy had to really think about that. And they decided against it. That's, that's what I've heard. Yeah. But my, my thing would be is I don't think you'd rely on him for 34 games. You'd, right. you'd rely on him in spot starts and, you know, in injuries. And so to me, that's your insurance policy. So to going back to what you said earlier, you almost have to give credit to the galaxy and say, Hey, we're going, we're, we're not, we're not, we're doing the tightrope walk without a net underneath. Like we're, we're going. And then if we, if we mess up, we mess up, but we're, we're not, you know, bringing in an insurance policy to, if something goes wrong, we're riding with, with, with day on. And so that's the thing that I do respect. But I, to me personally, I would have liked to have seen Billy Sharp, but for whatever reason, uh, that didn't work out. Um, by the way, Bob, five dollar super chat tip money for when Josh gets a <laughs> Galaxy face tat. I don't, I don't think that is that is happening. I was gonna say we can get the temporary tattoos. I think on game day you go with the face tat, right? And then you know you go into the office later in the week, but right. Yeah, I think temporary could be the way to go for the face tattoo. Maybe a it quasar. Sounds, under it sounds the better. Eye. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Philip gave us a two dollar super chat way at the beginning. He goes, "What size shirt is Josh Funko Pop wearing? Probably an extra large, right? Because isn't that the joke?" <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Um, oh no, that's like a that's, that's like an extra small. That was like an extra I was gonna small say, my, in there. My, I've never owned. A, I haven't owned a small since you know ninth grade. So again, my Funko Pop is the is the one person who gets to wear the the, the nice clothes. Again, yeah. the, it's it's imaginary. You know, we don't have to plump up the Funko Pop. We could say, hey, this is a toy. We're gonna we're gonna slim them down. So I appreciate that. Um, I would love, uh, I would love if anybody else has super chats, get them in now. Cause we are getting ready to wrap things up. So want to make sure we get your, uh, your chat in here before everything goes down. Let's talk about MLS and MLS live. Um, thankfully, uh, uh, the very kind people over major league soccer sent me my code for free again, which is always nice for reporters to be able to cover things and not have to pay for them. I very much appreciate that. Some people will say that they're buying us. Uh, and that means, I mean, really that, that is true. They bought me. I'm just going to say nice things about major league soccer from here on out. Um, <laughs> I can, we can be bought. Yeah, which, absolutely. You know, Hey, for these Angelino kits, they are kind of expensive. So, you know, if one makes its way right. to North Texas, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with that also. Yeah, I would just, you know, it's it's always, again, large Galaxy, large, okay? Not extra XL, large. Hammer, I don't, I don't the wear back. them anyway, okay? They're not going to get worn. <laughs> they might get they might get shown here every single time. This is why I do like having them. They will get shown here more than any Galaxy shirt and jersey that, you know, that is out there. It will be on this show, and we will get the hundreds of thousands of people who listen to us. Really, it's the, four, it's the same seven people who listen to it multiple times. 
but however that happens, we end up uh, showing it on. So uh, it'll be it'll be great. Uh, Gary, ten dollars super chat. Gary, your twentieth super chat, by the way. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Rad Dude, show is twenty super chats. That's a big cool? deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, now he just very cool. he just realized how much money he's dropped here. He's never doing it again. <laughs> he's like, man, you know what adds up, you know. Um, Rad show as always, gentlemen. Thank you very much. We appreciate all you do for us, fans. Cheers, fellas. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate you always in the chat room. Always yeah. having Gary nice always conversation. Always goes hard in the chat. Yeah, he does. Um, so, uh, so we have that. But let's talk about Major League Soccer. Uh, let's talk about the analyst teams. So basically, what seems to have happened is that they, I think, eighteen analysts are not coming back, and then they added another eight. Uh, there was talk that they had some cost overruns from last year. That things were more expensive than what they thought they were going to be, which. Again, you're trying to do something for the first time. How expensive is everything? And it's like, oh, well, it was actually very expensive, right? So the whole deal. Um, the other thing that was sort of a highlight of things to come here was 2 million um, subscribers to MLS Live. Now, I'm sure they count my free one that, that I have. And, you know, I'm sure they count the season <laughs> ticket members. Technically a subscriber, right? yeah. So I'm a subscriber, right? So the whole deal. But 2 million is a big number. And obviously, that's a messy number. Um, whenever he came into the league and, and that sort of jumping thing. So that seems to have really done something. Talking about uh, one of the things that is certainly highlighted in this uh, or is not highlighted in this, we can highlight for you, Kobe Jones not on this analyst mm. list anymore. So uh, does that mean a return of Kobe Jones and Joe Totino for your away games? I mean, you can, fingers crossed, right? What do, you want those two back together, I think, is, is what it is. The dream team, right? Can we also just, let's pause for a second and stop and acknowledge Mr. Joe Totino. Let me tell you, about Joe Totino and calling games at Coachella. Uh, they were basically calling games between bleachers. Hey, listen, it's primitive out there, all right? It, it's it's Indio. There's supposed to be infrastructure out for this stuff. There, there's limited infrastructure. If you saw the stream freeze, that type of thing, there's limited. They're, they're right on the edge of being able to really be... Uh, <laughs> my my podcast operates on the edge of infrastructure a lot of times, right? They're, 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 they're in a little worse shape probably than I am. Um, but he's calling a game off a nine inch monitor sitting between two bleachers and like the sun and the glare. And by the way, sitting down low, so you can't really see things that are happening above calling it off this little tiny screen, nine inches. Uh, remember whenever like a, a, a 15 inch television was a good size television. You're like, Oh man, you got a 15 inch. That's awesome. You know, <laughs> hold it. Now Joe's out there with a nine inch monitor trying to, trying to do this. And sometimes size matters, Eric, you know, now I have the 70 inch television. You, All right. You need to get there. What? What? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it. Yeah, okay. You're saying it. Okay. I just wanted to check. But Joe is an amazing individual. You listen to him, and I think he was with Glenn Crooks on the New York City uh, what, uh, broadcast, which was great to have both of them on there and to sort of go mm -hmm. back and forth. Glenn stopped, though, and acknowledged the greatness uh, that he was next to. And every time I see Mr. Joe, uh, Mr. Joe Titino, I, I, you have to acknowledge and say aye to the man. Um, I, I've said this before. He is nice to me when I, I don't think he needs to be. He's nice to everybody when he doesn't need to be. Uh, yeah. The advice he has given me over the years is truly some of the best advice I've ever received in all of my time. Um, and so, and if, and by the way, if anybody else told me that, I'd probably tell him to go, you know, get lost. But Joe Tatino says it. I'm like, yes, yeah, you're right. hundred percent. Of course you are. <laughs> it's, it, and it's not like just trying to, buy, he's right. He is right. You need to listen to him. He's very smart. A guy who's largely responsible for the rise of Jim Rome and everything that happened mm -hmm. over the years. So, um, yeah, Joe Tatino is amazing. And what yeah. he does he, on a regular basis is amazing. I love the man. He's, he's absolutely amazing. He, what, what I love about these Joe Tatino gush fests, and they happen, you know, pretty much every time right. he's on as well, is that how many times does it happen where, you know, uh, a broadcaster retires or, you know, something unfortunate happens. And then that's when you finally get the recognition. I love that he's getting the love right now live while it's happening. Right. You know, he's someone when, when the games have the, the alternative home feed, you know, I'm no longer in the Southern California market, but when I flip that over, it's like warm blanket getting Joe Titino talking about my LA galaxy. So I, I love whenever those go, gush fests happen, uh, I, I'm never sick of it. And anytime we're able to put a spotlight on it, I always appreciate it. So big shout out to Joe. I love Joe so much. Uh, Lasso uh, in here, $10 super chat. Well done again, gents. Let's hope for a triple threat. PPP, the triple P sighting soon. <laughs> Come on, JP. I was going to say, they're not on loan. They, so the PPP loan, that's, that's, that's something that we can work on. We'll workshop the name. We'll, we'll, we'll keep working on it. Um, let's, let's give everybody a heads up right now as we're getting ready to close out this show. I am going to tell you, we have 
this unbelievable opportunity as my son who was supposed to be in bed an hour and 15 minutes ago is certainly screaming at the door right next to us. <laughs> um, so, uh, by the way, $5 super chat from Christian. Would you sign a petition for a Joe Totino statue if I started it? I mean, everybody would. I, I think, yeah. I think you should deserve something somewhere, you know, target market. Yeah. Um, it should be like the Joe Totino press box, quite honestly, like just what everything or radio row, Joe Totino radio row, however you want to end up doing that. But let's, let's say we got this unbelievable opportunity that one of our listeners, uh, Ray is a, a is somebody who composes music for television and movies, and he offered the nicest thing in the world that anybody could possibly offer, which is to write us a theme song. I am warning you because I know how much you guys get scared of change. Okay, I don't don't freak out. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. We're gonna. Go, by the way, we're going to one song for the intro and the outro for both shows because I'm tired of playing the different songs and all this other stuff. We will have it in there. It'll be ready to go. You guys are gonna love it. Um, but, uh, we'll give, we'll give Ray a real shout out whenever we, we actually play yeah. this, but it's coming right before the start of the season, the Thursday night before that Sunday Miami game, there will be a new theme song. I might come That's... on before we start the show, Eric, and warn everybody ahead of time because they're going to cry a little bit. They're going to be like, Oh man, I can't believe this is ours. And Ray is That's an amazing kicker. human being that he did this. And it's only taken us 16 seasons to have something that is ours and ours. I can't wait to wrap myself in it and dance around and like <laughs> sing to it and just, you know, yeah. play it whenever it's when, maybe when it's a little sexy time with the wife, play, put that hey, on and be like, you know, what? you know, you know, that's what I'm I saying. I was fortunate enough to, to preview the song. And so you're not wrong. It can be used for all occasions. And so, so I was going to give a big shout out to Ray as well, but for highlighting to your point that it's ours, it's not other artists, you know, that we're playing their theme song. It's not the, you know, copyright free music that right. someone will watch a commercial for, uh, you know, some, uh, <laughs> rotor rooter yeah, and like, Hey, isn't that the COG theme yes, song it, yes, in the is. background? That that. Is correct. Oh, this is going to an original composition has some, you know, some chants in there, you know, some guitar, there's some, there's some good stuff happening. And I think you guys are really going to like it. So looking forward a week from today, the debut of the new COG theme song. Okay, good. I'm glad we got, I didn't want everybody, if you just spring it on people, they get, they could like, what happened? Did I put on the wrong podcast? Like what is going on? This isn't <laughs> what I'm used to. I wanted you to do it. By the way, if you made it all the way through to this end, and then we're talking about the song that we're going to play it. Like I feel like you're a true listener as well. Um, so we, <laughs> well, the, so. the, the true listeners are the ones who don't listen this next, this week. And right. then they're going to listen back to back right. this episode and next week's episode. Those, those are the true the, the true gangsters out there. We're, we're excited to uh, to do that. Um, by the way, I'm thinking about figuring out a way to release the song like on its own so that way you can like put it on your Spotify or something and listen to it too. Like we'll figure now that, that out. Now we're cooking. You know, and that way you can, you can do, uh, we had an unbelievable video that got sent into us of a, of a young kid who was who was doing the Corner of the Galaxy intro, really doing the Michael Araujo part if we're being quite <laughs> honest. With I told Michael that was somebody sweet, was coming, yeah. someone was coming for him, Mike. Uh, and uh, so now this kid, if we give him this song, then he can do it a little bit better, right? That's what we want. So um, this is going to be fun. Uh, I'm really excited. Bob says this is going to be like when Hans Zimmer composed the new MLS theme song. Exactly that way. That's exactly Which is a banger, though. It, 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 it's Hans Zimmer. Of course it is. That first Pirates of the Caribbean like soundtrack is like amazing. You know, I mean, how many things has he done? You're like, of course, of course it is. Right. Um, here are your events coming up again. The Empire Strikers LA Galaxy on Sunday, uh, LA Galaxy flash tattoos on Monday, El Pescador LA Galaxy paint night on Tuesday, Wednesday, 40% off the team store, Thursday player meet and greets Friday all day LA day. All right. And that is a Galaxy Gear Friday, as is tomorrow. Galaxy Gear Friday. Uh, and then Saturday, 224 LA Galaxy Donuts at Randy's Donuts all day. I am. I, I can't guarantee anything, but that Saturday, Eric, looks like that's a good call for me. And maybe I'll bring Jake and we'll go up and get some donuts. I don't know if I'm going to make anything else, but that's the one I'm looking at. I will let you guys know if I head up there. All right. Yeah. So, which I, yeah. I, I will be flying into town on Saturday. I don't think I'll make the donuts. You'll be right there. Uh, You're going to land but, in LA. Just, but, just hook around. Come on. I may, I may make it work, but I, I okay. do know, and we'll talk about it next week. There's some pregame festivities as well for the home opener, which I'm very much looking forward to. Oh, we're going to have some fun. This is going to be good. So a lot of things are coming up here. We're excited that everything is uh, is sort of pointed in that direction. We can't wait to get everybody rocking and rolling. All right. Uh, LA Galaxy have one more preseason game coming up this weekend. That is against the New York Red Bulls. After that, it is done. They'll put it to bed. The LA Galaxy will rest and recover. All of the big stars like Gabriel Peck will hopefully show up. Guys like Joseph Pantzel will come in and uh, be announced as a LA Galaxy guy. Maybe he'll make it in time for Miami. Maybe he won't. But all of this is leading up to your LA Galaxy getting ready to kick off the 2024 season. And you deserve it, LA Galaxy fans. You deserve to finally be in here ready to go 
locked in for this game against Miami and then onward, right? It's not just about Miami. It's about onward as well. So we are excited <laughs> that we get to bring you season 16, a corner of the galaxy right here all season long, getting you ready for your LA galaxy. Eric, tell people where they can find you. We'll get out of here. All right. As always, you can find me on everything, all social media at hammer EV nine. That's X formerly Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all the fun stuff. That's at hammer EV and the number nine. All right. If you're looking for me at J Gesswin, J G U S M A N, and of course at galaxy podcast, head on over to corner of the galaxy.com super chats real quick. Omar, $5. Will we ever get another live podcast at the stadium again? Maybe we'll work on it. Uh, executive producer Herb slides in there. Hey, Josh. Hey, hey, hammer late to the show, but wanted to say, Hey, Looking forward to listening to the replay. Nice jacket. Hammer. All right, there we go. We love you guys. We hope you have a great weekend. Train rides this weekend. If you want to come out to uh, to Goat Hill Junction, go ahead. O- o- Orange County Model Engineers. Just type it in. You'll find us. Uh, we'll see you there from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. I'll be out there driving away. All right. For Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh. Pat Guessman. you've been listening. You've been watching to our little corner of the galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.